morning 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 yes definitely big a big song for real um some people are so hard to believe that faith move mountains and prayer is the key some people are just hard to believe that faith move mountains and prayer is the key definitely a very, very fitting song for the topic that we are on this week which is prayer the key to victory so I just want to say thanks for all the persons I'm seeing on this morning um, from the various tabernacles um, just want to say again as usual you know it's 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 really it's nothing that it's something that I don't take for granted having this opportunity to share in this manner so I just want to say thanks again for joining. Um, before I go, let me just breathe a quick way of, word of prayer and then we get right into it. Holy God, our righteous Father, we come before you this morning acknowledging, Lord, that without you we are nothing. And Lord, we thank you for the fact that we are able to be alive another Friday morning, Lord. And we are blessed to be in your presence so we welcome your presence even now as i lead this morning devotion and i pray lord that whatever your will is it will be done through this this morning and i pray that all the persons who will listen that they will take something from it and that it will touch the hearts that may be stony and turn them to flesh in your holy precious name i pray amen amen so prayer the key to victory i think this was this was an excellent topic as conceptualized by pastor lewis and you know when i first heard the topic you know i want the first thing i something the first thing that came to my mind was one of my favorite verses and that was actually what i was going to do this devotion on this morning but i am however led to take it in a different direction this morning because <clears throat> it is not what i want but what the lord wants one of my favorite one of my favorite pastors to listen to is miles monroe the depth the depth of his teaching is something that I, I'm not, I've, I've, not, I've not seen many other preachers on that, st on that kind of um, uh, online platform that's, that speaks the depth that he speaks. And you know, so that is why I want, he's one of my favorite preachers on the online platform. And as you know, he's no longer alive, but he left. He was wise enough to use the technology at the time to leave these bits of, of what he knew and what he could pass on to us through the leading of the Spirit with us. And, you know, when he spoke about prayer, um, he said that this is one of the most important practices for a Christian. In fact, he stated that it's not, it's not an option, it's a mandate for us as Christians to pray. Because he referred to Jesus and he said to the disciples, when you pray this is how you should pray so it's not a matter of if we pray it is about when we pray so and he went further to state that that is miles monroe that prayer meetings at churches are however the least attended and it's an indication of the spiritual health of not just the church but the, but the people of god he continued to say that one of the primary reasons though why 
people shy away from prayer or Christians in general may not want to praise because they are not getting the results they desire and you know I, I believe that he is spot on and the truth is um, he put this forward and this is definitely the direction that I want to take it this morning regarding the results of our prayer and I must say I don't believe it is my belief I don't believe that especially as children of God that our father doesn't answer our prayer so for me it's not about it's not about whether or not God answers our prayer for me my belief is that God always answers our prayers especially as believers it may be a yes it may be a no it may be a wait it may be a stop but however there are there are instances that are there are hindrances as i would put it to getting the results that we desire so for me it's more about getting the results that we desire rather than him the lord not answering us so so it's really about how we pray, why we pray, what we pray, and also to whom we pray. So I just want to spend some time this morning to examine some of the hindrances to us getting the results, the victorious results that we desire in prayer. Because this is something that I believe has kept a lot of us from praying with the fervence that we ought to pray with as the bible says states pray without ceasing but a lot of us have ceased pray, praying because we are not getting the results that we want so it's not so as i said that is my belief it's not about god not answering our prayer but it's about not getting the results that we desire so there are some things there are some hindrances that prevent us from getting the desires when we pray getting those desires and i summarize it in the and i summarize these in the form of questions and the first question is are we in a right relationship and fellowship with god so first and foremost we we have to be in a right relationship with god to truly receive the desires are the results that we require that we want so when we pray we must be in a right relationship so what does this mean this means that we must be surrendered to Christ and become his children no longer servants of the dark but servants of the light but children of the light so no the truth is we cannot go to God requesting or asking certain things of god without being in that right relationship without being his children and you know it brought me back to thinking that you know no one grips closer to the new testament you know that little blue new testament bible no one grips tighter to that than some of the most wanted in this country and no one prays more than some of those persons but uh, but does god answer the prayer of those of unrighteous persons who willingly go against his will well proverbs 15 verse 8 gives us an indication of 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 the fact that that god doesn't answer the prayer of the unrighteous because it says in proverbs 15 verse 8 that the sacrifices of the wicked is an abomination to the lord and the sacrifices include prayer but the prayer of the upright are his delight and john 9 puts it even starker puts it even more clearer john 9 verse 31 states that no we know that god heareth not sinners but if any man be a worshiper of god and doeth his will him he heareth so the truth is we have to be in a right relationship first and foremost we have to surrender to god we have to be children of god for us to really get the desires that we want out of prayer. Lord does not answer the prayer 
of the unrighteous in 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 in, in certain ways if if it's a prayer, prayer of repentance then he answers and he answers if it is his will to answer or if, if what the person is praying about will fulfill his will because we have many cases in the bible that persons who are not necessarily christians are not necessarily children of children of god whose prayers were answered because it was god's will so he cannot answer prayer out of his will so that is important but the second part of it though fellowship being in the right fellowship is also important so right relationship which has to do with us accepting christ as lord and savior but going even further is having the right fellowship so as children of god we have to be in right fellowship with him being in the right fellowship means that we are obedient to his commands we are consistent or constant in com communication with him we read his word and overall we are doing his will so once we have become children of god then comes the fellowship that we should hone and develop so john 15 verse 17 speaks to that fellowship so one is relationship which is our so now we are become children of god so we are now in a right relationship with god and then it comes the fellowship which john 15 verse 17 states that if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you so herein comes the fellowship so we abiding in him and him abiding in us we may pray and ask for what we will and it shall be done unto us so right relationship right fellowship so that so that is something that we need to consider when we seek god in prayer the second question i'll ask is are we in a right fellowship with our brothers and sisters so again we go back to fellowship are we in a right fellowship with our brothers and sisters the lord has called us to love one another so love our neighbors as ourselves he also called us to do unto others as we would have them do unto us forgive each other as christ forgave us in fact I want to spend a little, a little time here because when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, this was a part of the prayer that we term the Lord's Prayer. And that particular section of the Lord's Prayer states that forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So in Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray, he stressed the importance of forgiveness, forgiving each other so that he in the manner that we want him to forgive us so this was so important that he went on in verses this is matthew 6 verse 12 that was where the whole idea in the prayer of forgiveness came in but it was so important that verses 14 and 15 continue to emphasize that forgiveness is important in the life of his children in addition we need to care for the less fortunate the widows the orphans the homeless the mentally challenged etc these are some of the persons that the bible mentions team others above ourselves philippians 2 verse 3 and one of the most probably one of the hardest ones in this whole scheme of right fellowship with our fellow men is loving our enemies matthew 5 verse 44 this is possibly the hardest but god calls us to be in a right fellowship with with each other so we have to examine whether or not we are in a right fellowship with our fellow men if that is a hindrance to us getting the results that we need thirdly or the third question we need to ask ourselves before we before we blame god for not answering us or saying that lord you know you're not hearing me it is for me again it's about the results so are we praying according to his will and pastor lewis spoke about this i think brother ian ellis also spoke about this um and john 5 14 to 15 states that 
this and this is this is one of the verses that I did one of my first um, morning prayers on John 5 14 to 15 and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and if we know that he hears us what whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him so this is a confidence thing that if we pray anything according to his will he hears us but it's a very powerful verse but you know we often say that we want God's will to be done but are we truly are we truly do we truly want his will to be done are we prepared for his will for us are we truly prepared for his will so even though we pray it and we say Lord your will be done do we truly mean it do we truly are we truly prepared for his will to be done in our lives it will not for his will to be done in our lives it may not be easy so we have to also be mindful of that so God does nothing outside of his will and he every glory belongs to him so whatever he does it is to his glory so no matter how sincere contrite and good we think we are he does nothing outside of our will so if we come to to God bawling and crying because we are going through a particular situation it is though he's touched by our sorrow he will do nothing outside of his will so we should search daily for his will however we can take heart in knowing that as children as his children his will and plan for us is nothing but good no matter how we feel and no matter what we are going through his will for us is nothing but good it's just for us to search for his will and know his will fourth question we have to ask ourselves is that are our motives pure and again this was touched on yesterday james 4 verse 3 ye seek and ye receive not because because you ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your loss so again we have to examine whether or not our requests that we make of god our communication with god do we have the right motives are the motives pure so i won't spend a lot of time on this because it was a lot was said about it yesterday but just to say that in making our requests our motives must be pure and we can't fool God. If we want, if we want, a part, if we are praying about a particular thing in selfishness, then the Lord searches our hearts and knows that. If we are praying to, 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 to big up ourselves or to enlarge our, ourselves and giving no glory to God, the Lord searches our hearts and knows it. There is nothing that we can say to the Lord. Or even demonstrate to him that he's not able to see right through as I always say we are naked before God so we have to ensure that our motives are pure in our prayer so that we can get the results in victory the fifth question and I'm coming down the fifth question that we have to ask ourselves and this is very critical as well are we exhibiting faith when we pray and Hebrews, when we talk about faith, we talk about Hebrews. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now without faith, well faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. So when we pray, are we praying? Are we praying? Hoping? Are we praying and and calling things that are not as if they are are we holding firm to our faith in christ and our faith in what god can do for us or are we just praying and and hoping and wishing wishful prayers so let us be mindful that as hebrews 1 defines is pray um faith is the substance of things hoped for 
and the evidence of things not yet seen. So we may not see the results of our prayer same time or immediately as we pray. But may the Lord help us to have faith, to believe in what we actually have prayed about. That it will come through, it will. It will be evident sometime in the near future. Hebrews 11 verse 6 goes even further to state that but without faith it is, plus, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Emphasis on the diligently because faith is about diligence. It's about persistence. It's not about giving up. We may pray today and the result that we desire, we may not see that result. But let us be constant in prayer, having faith, and He will, in due time, reward us according to our faithfulness to Him and according to His will. So, faith is paramount. Faith is extremely important in prayer without faith prayer is prayer is senseless so faith is a critical ingredient when we pray that is the way that we unlock victory through prayer and faith believing that what god says in his word and what god's will is for us he will do because god is not a liar and when we doubt him we declare him a life. So let's have faith and believe the words of God. And let us remind him of the, the words that he has said to us. We will not be, we will not, will not suffer, we will not beg for bread. So he'll provide for us. He'll heal us. He will protect us. All those things. Let's have faith that He can and He will do those things in our lives. And then the final question that we must ask ourselves, because again, if we don't examine these things, we may not be able to identify what may be the hindrance to us getting victory in Christ. So the sixth question we have to ask is, are we truly praying in the name of Jesus? Because the we are commanded to pray for anything asking in, the, in his name. And John 14, 13 to 14 gives us the exact portion of scripture that speaks to this. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Yes, yes, I know that our prayers usually end with the, with the term or the phrase, in the name of Jesus, amen. However, praying in the name of Jesus, it goes deeper than just repeating that phrase. Because repeating that phrase is, is not a magical phrase, you know. It's not something that, you know, when we say it at the end of the prayer, it means automatically our prayers are answered it's not a magical password praying in the name of jesus is about an acknowledgement it's about a posture of humility praying in the name praying in his name praying in the name of jesus is about recognizing that we are not righteous apart from christ we are not righteous our righteousness as the bible says are as filthy rags but with christ our righteousness is is we have the right, we are in a right standing with God. We cannot make a demand of God if it was not for Christ. We are not worthy to go to God but through Christ. And Christ, it, and it is Christ who intercedes on our behalf. And that is how we are able to reach God. No one comes to the Father except through Christ. So, praying in the name of Jesus, or praying in his name, is again, is not about just simply repeating the phrase, 
in Jesus' name at the end of the prayer, or in the name of God, or in the name of Christ, or, or however we understand the name to be called, Christ, Jesus, etc. It's about humility. It's about not thinking that God owes us anything. But if it was not for Christ, we could not go to make any request of God. Because he stands interceding on our behalf. He is the one who we are. He is the reason why we are even able to pray. He is the reason why we are able to, to, to get to God. He intercedes on our behalf. So, I, um, I will leave it at that this morning. We, well, those are the areas that we should really examine to see if our prayers are, to see if we are really getting the results of our prayers. Because we have to examine these things, especially if we find that we are getting disheartened, if we are getting discouraged in prayer. Because a lot of many sometimes some of the things that we ask God for we feel that we are not receiving or he has not answered but as I have said before for me it's not about him not answering us how could our father not answer us how could our father the one who we have surrendered to not answer us so for me it's not about not answering but sometimes it's simply he simply says wait for one reason or another whether we are not ready for the answer or the full result of our prayer or his will or his purpose or there is something that hinders our prayer from receiving the results that we would want so again we may not receive the results that we want if we are not in a good relationship or fellowship with him if we are not in a good fellowship with our fellow men if we are outside of his will if our motives are not pure if we fail to have faith and if we fail to also recognize our position through Christ so may we examine ourselves this morning may we look to see where we can effectively utilize the key that is prayer to un unlock our victory let us not allow any of these questions to our, our actual things to impede impede the victory that we can have through prayer but let us examine ourselves and see where we may be falling short and to truly look and to with the help of the holy spirit with the help of god to make the necessary adjustments is it that we are not living good with others is it that we are not in a right fellowship with god are we praying in faith are we going outside of his will and then expecting him to answer our prayers or are we not praying truly in the name of jesus so as we pray this morning as i pray this morning i just encourage you to pray along with me as we seek god in this time this is a very trying time and we need to be in the right fellowship with him and we need to ensure that we can obtain victory through prayer as we i know a lot of us are in prayer even more now because of the trying time so let us examine ourselves so that we may obtain victory in our prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, our God, our Father, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our, pro our all in all. Lord, we acknowledge, Lord, that we could not even come to you this morning without your Son, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we acknowledge that we are sinners saved by grace. And, Lord, that and we are thankful that we have this opportunity this morning to be alive, first of all, and to also come before you freely. We don't need another person to intercede on our behalf, per se. But we have your Son, Jesus Christ, who intercedes for us. And the Holy Spirit, 
who is able to interpret those groans those groans that we are not able to even those things that we are not even able to mention in prayer so lord we thank you for who you are because you are holy you your promises are true you said that you would provide for us so we need not worry about finances or clothes on the on our backs we need not to worry about anything lord but lord as humans we do worry and we do fail to have faith but lord i pray that you and en we will enlarge the faith that we have in your promises lord that are laid down in your holy book because lord without faith it is impossible to please you so lord help us to increase from just the measure of faith that we have lord but help us to go deeper a deeper level of faith in you especially in this time lord this trying time that we are going through with what is happening in our country the crime violence the, the coronavirus etc lord help us to dig deeper in faith believing that you are able to do far above and exceedingly what we could ever ask or even think help us to have that faith lord and lord i pray that as your people lord that we will examine ourselves those hindrances those hin those things that hinder our prayer from getting the results that are that we we require lord help us to recognize it lord help us to be humble enough to dig deep and to look internally for those things are we if it may it may be a case that lord you just are telling us to wait it is not yet your time it is not your will that thing that we are earnestly seeking god for maybe it's not your will so lord help us to pray according to your will because your will for us is nothing but good your will for us is that we prosper your will for us is that is that everything that we are not we are not we are not the tail but we are the head so lord help us to to to, to know and to be assured of your will lord i pray that as people lord we will live lovingly with each other lord because you have commanded us to love each other and even to esteem others above ourselves lord it takes a lot of humility for us to reach that point of esteeming others above ourselves but lord help us develop that humility because without it lord without humility without that 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 stance in our lives lord your prayers our, our prayers sorry our prayers our prayers cannot be victorious our prayers cannot unlock victory so lord help us to recognize that we have to come to you from a humble place knowing that without jesus christ we are nothing without him we are not righteous without him we are not holy praying in his name in a sincere way not boastful not puffed up as the pharisees were not boasting that we are good but recognizing that there is no good within us except through christ there is nothing holy within us except through christ and christ intercedes on our behalf so lord as we pray lord may we recognize this lord may we acknowledge this may we put it into practice from a from a sincere heart because lord we cannot fool you we cannot fool you because you search our heart and our hearts must be sincere so lord i pray that your people your people will begin to pray a different way lord i pray that if we are discouraged lord that you will encourage us through your word because prayer is an essential part of our lives and so lord i pray that you will continue to answer our prayers lord continue to help help us to get the results that we desire lord as long as they are within your will as long as they are in your purpose and as we go through a very difficult time 2020 has come with so many challenges there are so many threats earthquakes happening here and there killing of your people lord here and there racial tensions across the world so many things that are happening that 
we, we, we are we are puzzled but Lord help us to be no more in prayer for those reasons Lord that is the reason why we should be in prayer more even more now than ever so Lord help us to be in prayer help us to unlock the victory through prayer help us to be sincere Lord help us to be to come to you with a broken and a contrite heart and Lord I pray that even those who are praying with me at this time those who are on the stream Lord that you will fulfill the desires of their heart Lord if it is healing it if it's provision if it is to be in a right relationship with others if it is to if it is just protection from what is happening around us Lord I pray that you hear their prayer Lord and I pray that through Jesus Christ it will be done and it is done it is done in his name once we have faith so Lord help us to have that faith help us to come to you humbly and I pray that you will continue to guard protect each and every one of us throughout this period and help us to learn from all that is happening that through prayer we can conquer all in the name of your son Jesus Christ I pray amen and amen so lord may the lord be with us throughout the rest of this day and i encourage you to continue to tune in to the other persons who will be speaking on this very lovely topic prayer the key to victory so join us tomorrow and i want to thank you again for joining me and continue to tune in as we seek the Lord in this time, as we seek the Lord to have victory in this difficult time through prayer, knowing and believing that he hears us. So it's not a matter of God not hearing us, he hears us. But we have to also keep our end of the bargain and examine ourselves to ensure that we have victory in Christ. So may you have a wonderful, godly and blessed day. And may you continue praying as we seek God to have victory in this time. Blessings.